Now that you've got all of your supplies ready, it's time to start playing with them. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of creating a quilt sandwich, quilting it using a domestic machine like this one, and then cutting out the bag pieces. Make sure that you stay tuned for my top tip because it's going to help you tremendously in that final stage of cutting out your bag pieces. For this part of the project, I'm going to need my one yard of exterior fabric. And for this project, I'm using my canvas fabric in neon noodles, which is just what I'm calling it. That's not the actual name of the fabric. I'm also gonna need my one yard of lining fabric, neon pink starry, super cute. I'm going to need my one yard of stabilizer. And for this one, I'm choosing to use soft and stable for this project because why not? It's fun, it's a different uh, product. Maybe you've never seen it before and I can maybe share some tips about working with this product. Before I get started with making my sandwich, I like to press my ingredients. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and just press my exterior and my lining fabric. If you bought soft and stable and you purchased it in a package like this, be, pre oh, <laughs> be prepared for one million wrinkles and creases in your soft and stable. The good news is this will go away very quickly with just some steam from your iron. <laughs> so I would say get out your iron. You can put it on a high setting, use lots and lots of steam, and these wrinkles are gonna disappear in just one second. So let me show you what that looks like. Here, let's get a good juicy one here. Look at this one. All you have to do is just hit it with some steam and then the wrinkles just go right away. Like they were never there. Problem solved. So I'm just gonna finish uh, pressing up this piece of foam. Ta-da! So now I've got my soft and stable all ready to go. Quick reminder, if you have directional fabric, you're going to want to refer to the pattern and piece that little section that is mentioned in the pattern before you make your quilt sandwich. So don't go any further. If you've got directional fabric and you want to piece a section, do that now. When I'm quilting panels on my domestic machine, my favorite method for creating a quilt sandwich involves spray adhesive. And today I'm gonna to be using a product called Odif 505, Odif, I'm not sure, 505, but it's a spray adhesive that you can buy in a can just like this one. And I'll show you how simple it is to use it. I've laid out my fabric so that I've got the exterior fabric face down, right side facing down. Then I've got a layer of my foam stabilizer. And then on top, I've got a layer of my lining fabric and that is right side facing up. So I've got a sandwich as if you would make a quilt. So in order to adhere the three of them together, I'm simply going to roll back my lining fabric to about halfway. Then I'm going to shake up my can and adhere some adhesive to the lining fabric. I find that I get better results if I spray it onto the fabric rather than onto the foam. I don't find that I get a lot of overspray. It's pretty non-fuss. And I'm gonna roll it back spread it out. Now I know that I've got about this chunk done. I'll move it back towards me. I'll pull back the fabric until it gets stuck on the adhesive. Add more adhesive to the fabric. Just making sure I get out to the edges. <laughs> Roll that back on top, press it down. And then I'll repeat the same thing with the bottom half of this panel. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do exactly the same with the exterior fabric. And now I've got a sandwich. So these three layers are stuck together and they will stay stuck together as I continue to quilt them. Of course, there are a lot of different ways that you can baste a quilt sandwich. And while I use spray, you might prefer pins or thread basting, or I don't know, maybe there's some method I don't even know about. But if you already have a method that works well for you and you use it in quilting, I say just do exactly the same thing here with this little quilt sandwich. Now it's time for me to mark the lines on my quilt sandwich. And I'm going to do that simply by using a pen and a ruler. You might have a totally different preference. Uh, maybe you like to use a Hera marker or chalk or 
um, I don't know, all kinds of a pencil or maybe you have a favorite pen that you like to use, go ahead and use whatever works best for you. But I'm just going to take some time now and draw out a one inch cross hatch on this because I think it's going to look really cute with the curvy noodles and like a strong angular design, but maybe you would rather do free motion quilting on yours, or maybe you have a motif that you like to do. I'm just going to do simple cross hatching because I really like the way that it looks. So I'm going to spend some time now and mark out all of those lines so I can get quilting. So now I've got some lines marked on my sandwich and you'll see that I didn't mark all of them. First of all, that would be quite tedious, but then also I don't really need to because I've got a walking foot on my machine with a guide bar. And so I'm going to do these ones first, get started. That'll get me a real good feel of how this is going. And then I will be able to finish the rest of it using my guide bar. But I like to set up a little safety net for myself when I'm first starting to quilt out um, a design because it just makes me feel more comfortable. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to set up my sewing machine and then I'll get to work. Now I've got my trusty Genomi set up. Although I do most of my piecing on a Juki machine, this one has got an even feed system in the walking foot that is just, oh, chef's kiss. And it just makes tasks like this, quilting small panels, such a breeze. So I have fitted my machine with my even feed foot. I've also used a guide and I have changed it out so I have a thicker needle. Today I'm using a size 100 because that is what was closest <laughs> when I reached into my needle bin. I just want something a little bit bigger than I would use for normal piecing. The main thing here is to relax and take your time. I often find that I have to remind myself to roll my shoulders back <laughs> and bring them away from my ears and also to stop hunching, which is what I normally like to do. So I'm just going to let the machine do its work and it will do the work of pulling the sandwich through the machine. I'm going to roll up my quilt sandwich as needed so that I can shove it in the throat space of my machine, although this machine has a very large throat space, so that's very nice. And I'm going to use my guide as a method of quilting out my line so I don't have to mark every single one on the quilt. So now I'm gonna mark just a few lines going in the opposite direction, sort of one every six inches in order to give me a guideline. I'm gonna stitch all those out and then I'll have my quilt sandwich. Okay, now I've got my quilted sandwich. And doesn't that look nice? I think that this texture looks gorgeous. And while it's not perfectly square, I don't really care because it looks nice. And when I sew this into a bag, it's gonna look spectacular. So that is how you quilt up your sandwich. My top tip when it comes to cutting out your bag pieces is to only do this when you are at your very best. I would not recommend that you cut out these pieces when you're tired, angry, in a rush, when you've got TV going, anything like that. You wanna be distraction free and totally focused on this task. I want you to be hydrated, caffeinated, medicated, whatever it is that you need to do to be at your best, that's how you should be when you cut out these pieces. Why? Because the pattern is not very forgiving, as in the pattern uses almost every square inch of this quilted sandwich. So if you make a mistake and cut out one of your pieces wrong, you're going to be in trouble. So you want to really take your time, slow down, and make sure that you've got lots of time and energy to do this task. I would also recommend that you change out your rotary blade because that's gonna get you a really nice easy finish when you're cutting out these pieces. I would recommend that you use the biggest quilting ruler that you have, maybe put multiples of them together in order to cut out the bag pieces. Double check and maybe even triple check the <laughs> measurements before you actually make a cut. So I would check the pattern, check my ruler, check the pattern, check my ruler, and then make a cut and use the labels that are included at the back of the pattern in order to keep all of your little bits and pieces organized so you don't get them confused later on. I put them in the pattern for a reason. I think you'll find that they're really handy. Where indicated in the pattern, you'll need to actually round some of the corners of your pieces. And you can do that using a multiple variety of tools. You could use acrylic templates, which are kind of bougie, but I really like them. And if you think you're going to be making lots of bags or quilts with rounded corners, this might be a nice investment for you. You could use the template that is included at the back of the pattern. So there's a little printed template that you can use, or you could use a jelly jar. And I find that those are exactly the right measurement for what the pattern indicates. 
I prefer to trace out the curve and then cut along that curve using my scissors rather than using my rotary cutter to cut around a curve and a template. Immediately after you cut out all of your pieces, you're going to want to stay stitch around the outside of those pieces. In quilting, I would call this a victory lap, TM. But what that means is you're just making a line of stitches around the perimeter, one eighth of an inch away from the outside edge of your piece. And that is going to stop all of those quilting lines that you just spent all of that time and energy putting into your sandwich from unraveling. Because the more you handle these pieces, the more you work them together in a bag, I promise you that quilting will come undone. So you're going to want to stay stitch around the outside as soon as, you, as soon as you've got your pieces cut, your corners cut, and everything's labeled. So don't wait, don't do this three days from now, do it as soon as you're done cutting your pieces and future you will be very happy about that. And that's it for the quilting and cutting section of this pattern. If you liked what you saw here and you want more, then I would encourage you to check out my online course called Duffel Master. It's an online course where I walk you through every single step, every single stitch of making this pattern. I've put in all my best tips, all my best tricks, every single thing that I know about making this pattern, I have put into that online course. Students who have taken it absolutely love it. You are going to want to see their testimonials because they are raving about it. So I will put a link to that in the description below. And until then, I'm wishing you happy bag making and I'll see you in the next video.